names. You have also another identity as a very prolific columnist. And uh, I am a great admirer of your columns which appear fortnightly in the New yeah, Indian Express. Indian, Indian so Express yeah. Many people in Orissa must be familiar with your columns. But I am a great admirer of them. Thank you. And I know that uh, when you express your opinions there, that are less than popular on many occasions. Yeah. And uh, they have invited the wrath, or the anger, or the of people, or the, yeah. power, the establishment, or yeah. powers that be, or people who feel outraged or offended by your yeah. bold and unconventional. So how do you, what sustains you? Because it's not a nice uh, experience to be assaulted or to be attacked or to be abused or uh, to receive threatening calls. So what is it? Because this is not what generally writers do. They, they choose, uh, they, they, most of us, for instance, I, the people I know or I myself would like to describe ourselves as fence sitters. We, we would like to sit on fences. But you take positions, positions which uh, involve you in considerable risk at times. What sustains you? I mean, what what motivates you to take uh, this kind of? <laughs> I I like? personally find that when you sit down to write, basically if you know that you are fundamentally answerable only to your conscience, and or when you stand up to speak, if you know that you are basically only answerable to your conscience, and uh, uh, and that it is very important to be truthful. To the extent a person can be truthful, sometimes we, you know, we may be, we may bluff to make something more interesting or something like that. But fundamentals cannot be breached, breached. So to that extent, if you are committed to the values, what we call the civilizational values like liberty, like uh, like uh, liberal values and justice and a humanist viewpoint, which are all today bad bad words. You know, you can't. The moment you say liberal, somebody will call you a neoliberal. So right. these are all uh, problematic things because that, that's why I said there's a whole retrograde set of forces are at work destroying these things. So if you are personally sure about what you are saying and you know that it is important, otherwise I can't go to sleep if I've been lying, then um, I might not get to get, uh, even get sleep. So And it's not very difficult to do because living in a place, it's a democracy and it is still a reasonably well, very incompetent democracy, but a reasonably... A democracy nevertheless. Yeah, a reasonably free democracy. Certain strengths. Uh, yes, it is there. And in, in living in Kerala, when I write something, I know what can be expected. I mean, the worst case scenario also I know. Uh, 10 million, or one crore Malayalis uh, live one, one, outside. One crore Malayalis live outside. So how do they respond to their literature? And that's what? one, yeah, that's an interesting uh, question. Because when you ask me about the new readership, you know, for the last so many years, before the arrival of the internet and of the satellite television, for something like half a century, these immigrant Malayalis were cut off from the Malayali yes. literature, from news, from the mainstream life in Kerala. Now, most of them read our daily newspapers. On the net. On the net, at least 12 hours before we read. Because okay, we get because it only yes. at 6.30 a.m. Yes, the morning the pa edition. The paper then. goes into the net the previous night at, uh, at 12 a.m. 12 a.m. So they are up to date. And now in the Gulf, bookshops are opening. And uh, there are bookshops in the U.K. where you can buy Malayalam books. So the, in the, the Gulf? The, in the Gulf, there are several. Oh. There are several. Has it benefited? I mean, it has benefited. They are benefited doing Malayali literature, Mal Mal yes, Malayalam yeah. literature. This is the new readership that is coming into play. They are more active. Maybe nostalgia makes them yes. more interested in, uh, in what's going on. And in the net, there are, I think, a few thousand writers in Malayalam. A few thousand. There are Malayalam mag at least 50 net magazines in Malayalam filled with writings by people whom you have never heard of. The blo some of the blogs are absolutely out of this world and they have come out as books and they are bestsellers. Right. So that sort of a thing has happened, which I think is quite... So it is the new cyber civilization coming into being. So in uh, a way, globalization has it is, it is uh, served to so or contributed, contributed to the process of popularizing. Popularized. Although it is a common, yeah. I think, the uh, received wisdom is that uh, globalization or technology and you are also, you have been involved in writing scripts for films. Yeah. So, and Malayalam film industry is yeah. quite well known yeah. and we know Adur Gopal Krishnan and all. Yeah. Has the film industry in any way activated or contributed to 
uh, the process of enriching Malayali uh, literature or the involvement of writers in the film industry? Yeah. Has it been uh, beneficial? Yeah. You know, at the, at the time of the growth, the beginning and the growth and development of the Malayalam film industry, some of, the, some of our best poets and writers were involved in it. Uh, people like, while in, at the level of lyrics, while at Ramavarma and P. Bhaskaran and Owen Mikurup. Owen Mikurup, who yes. recently he, won he the... He visited our side. Uh, he visited our side. A few also. years ago. And he continues to write lyrics for uh, movies. Actually, what he did was, what all the three of them did was, they brought the poetic sensibility into the lyrics that they wrote for the movies. So that made a tremendous difference in the sense that people, an average moviegoer is not a poetry reader. But it educated his but sensibility. But it educated his sensibility in regard to, regard to the language and the poetry because they did not, for, for the yeah. movies, they did not write something yeah. that was second rate. Yes. The early Malayalam movies so. were, I will say, almost 100% of them were based on novels and stories which were at that time available in Kerala. Then later on they started inventing their own thing. But the Malayalam movie also is a very, it's a very vibrant place where a um, lot of, if not literary things, culturally it is still, uh, still it's creative, vibrant. It's, it's very vibrant. Uh, any anything that you would like to tell your uh, fellow writers in Orissa? Any anything that you would like to now that you have met so many and you have interacted with yeah. so many and and we are we feel so privileged to have uh, you with us and is there anything that you would like to tell them before you? Well, leave I, am, uh, I don't think I should take that sort of a liberty, but I think it is not only they, uh, including me. I think we all should try to keep. India as good a place as was imagined by people like Mahatma Gandhi or Abdul Kalam Asad or Nehru or Ambedkar. So they, had, they were visionaries. They knew what they were doing, the kind of diversity that they were trying to bring together. And that's why they talked about a secular India and a democratic India. But these things are now slowly seems to be, people seem, it's under attack, basically. Getting afraid at it the is, edges. Yeah, yeah, afraid at the edges and people are almost bombing it, I would say. So I think this, if we, whenever we speak, write or uh, do anything, I think this awareness, it is time that we all kept this awareness at the back of our mind. Otherwise, there's no point in enjoying India and the democracy, I thought. Ajay, I'm also Bharatra Bishista Galpika Stambhakar O Upanyasika Sri Paul Jakaria Se Ama Sahita Alachana Kale Ebang Ame Tankara Sahita Alachana Bohut Kichi Sikhilu Ebang Tankara Asabad Amaku Eka Ama Sahitya Kuba Amaro Sahitya Jagatuke Kunutan Prerana Pradan Kariola Asakare Ebang Apuna Samasteaku Pavokarithiola Asakare Dhanavad